one with one of my cooking teachers, and she's going to explain some of the Thai ingredients. Yeah. This one is a special one. Special one. So we've been making a lot of different curries and a lot of traditional, yeah. um, <laughs> a lot of the traditional dishes which we love so much, but completely vegan with no plant based or all plant based. The Thai food can be used. What is this? <laughs> Galango. Same, same like ginger, same family. But different. <laughs> <laughs> they have very different teeth, yeah. so cannot substitute. Yeah. Look like ginger, but not ginger, the same family. Yes. Yes. You can call ginger sister. Where can we find Galango? Asian market. Asian market. Asian market. Asian market. Asian market. Asian market. Or if you cannot find Galango, go to Thailand. Eat something. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you can buy from the Thai restaurant. Exactly. But this is very important for the taste. Yeah. And how's this? How's this? Please, um, spicy. Look at her face. Oh, you taste it? Oh, you're going to taste it. Maybe just a little, little piece. So this is something that if you can't find the galango, then you can just leave it out of the recipe. You don't want to. You don't want to substitute the ginger for the galango. Just leave it out. That's smart. No something instead of galango. Only galango. Only galango. No substitute. Okay. Smell it first. Yeah. Smells very invigorating. <laughs> if you want to wake up. If you want to wake up, put it in. I don't want to wake up. That's enough. <laughs> it's good in the flavor, but just to eat plain is very strong, very spicy. Mm. I'm sorry to talk Thai. Spicy. Yeah. You hear I'm speaking? Yeah. <laughs> with Pan so much. <laughs> What's this one? We know. What is fun? This one. Um, lemongrass. And this too is from the Asian market. This one has a very um, a beautiful smell. There's a lot of essential oils that are lemongrass. Oh, it smells so fragrant. And this helps with the tom yum soup and a lot of different soups. Really? For bugs. Oh, you can put it right in your skin. Oh, that's a great tip. If you find some, you can buy some extra at the market. A lot, a lot of this stuff. If you like spicy, so many chilies you've been using. How many pieces of chili? What's that? How many pieces of chili? 20 pieces of chili. But what did you tell me yesterday when the Thai ladies want to diet? They have many chili. Yeah, 20 pieces of handful of chili. And chili, just to rev up the metabolism. The Thai ladies know. <laughs> And what about all these herbs? These are beautiful. This is what is this? This is kaffir lime. Yeah. Lime, but not lime. The food look like look the food look like chili lime. So I still it's it's not like basil. It's harder. Yeah. So you um you put it, in, but you're not supposed to eat it. Wow. And smell yeah. like salt. Smell like salt. Well, thank you so much, Pan. Yeah. That was so <laughs> Bye bye. I'm here at Wat Po, which is the spot of the reclining Buddha in Bangkok, and I have to share with you guys that I'm feeling so nostalgic right now. Bangkok is the place that was the first place that I came after I left Australia on my round the world journey and over the years it's a hub that I've come to several dozen of dozens of times in between coming going to Cambodia and Laos and Vietnam and Mongolia and all these different places and meeting other travelers and their backpackers and going with them and it was the first place where I started to really feel free and so to me you know Bangkok has and, and Thailand in general has developed so much. It's changed, but a lot of things, especially here in the old part of the city where the old temples are, have, have not changed. There's still smiley, amazing Thai people. Um, it's a place where I feel so much just joy and inspiration and happiness being here. And it feels like coming home. I'm really happy to be back in Bangkok.
จุดมงงามข้างสุดขาที่ใหญ่ที่สุดจุดที่สองก็คือท้ายสาระการเรียนนะครับทางประตูที่จะไปสาระการเรียน I'm inside here at the reclining Buddha which is a really important Structure. There's a lot of Buddhists that come just to pay their respects to Buddha, and it's super long. I don't know the exact meter length, but it just took me about two minutes to walk all the way down. So we can get a closer look. Here's the feet of Buddha, and then it goes all the way down to the head. So I'm back on the Khao San Road, which is a backpacker road here in Thailand. It's where I started coming years ago when I first started my round the world journey. It's a place where I met so many travelers from Israel and England and just countries all around the world I would end up traveling with. It was a wild time in my life where I was just out here on the road for months in Thailand and literally years around the world. So the Khao San has definitely changed. It doesn't seem quite as, as wild and dangerous as it used to seem. It's a little bit more tame and there's a lot of different um, people here now, not just the crazy out there backpackers, but it's still really awesome. After all these years, it's still a great place to, to meet and to um, hang out as a backpacker. Well, since I started coming, it has changed. There's a much broader base of people Come, but it's still a place where a lot of things are going on. You can get clothes made, and you can. There's a lot of different restaurants. There's street food. You can still eat pad thai for under a dollar, um, about 25 baht. You can get lots of cut up fruit. You can go shopping for different clothes and um, lots of souvenirs and jewelry, and um, you can walk to the Grand Palace, you can meet other travelers if you want to party, there's a lot of bars, um, you can just hang out all day, you can get Thai massage still for 220 baht, which is around under $7, so um, you can people watch, you can sit all day drinking uh, young coconuts or beer, whatever you want, and just hang out as well. Market, which is about uh, two hours outside Bangkok. This is a market that's been happening for hundreds of years. It's a place where the Thai people came traditionally to trade their fruits and vegetables and other things. Um, today that still happens, but there's also some tourist stuff as well, which is which is great. You know, there's something for everybody. <laughs> Everyone can experience um, the market. But it's amazing that this market is still happening after hundreds and hundreds of years in the same exact place. And it's so much fun to take these little boats down the river and just to see all the different vendors and to see the life. About an hour outside Bangkok is the train market, which is really wild because right on either side of this grassy train track, which looks completely deserted, is a full-on market that's happening with, you know, just lots of different produce and seafood and herbs and all types of food items. Lots of different Thai people are coming and shopping. And then the train comes and actually runs through the market at least four times a day, they say. And what's crazy is nobody moves their stuff at all. Some of it's pretty much touching the train tracks and the train comes right over the food and nobody, you know, people get away from the tracks but nobody moves their stuff, it's, it's crazy. I'm in the Grand Palace now and I just want to give you a little peek into the scope of how beautiful and huge this palace is. There's so many different things to, walk, to see as you walk around. It is really hot today. I think it's about 100 degrees and all day I've just been drinking a lot of different coconut water that you can get on the street here and a lot of the cut up fruit. I just had a mango, I just had some rambutan. So this is the kind of weather where I just want to hydrate and eat hydrating fruits and um, again a lot of coconut water, a lot of 
uh, mineral rich foods and I don't even want anything cooked naturally or anything too heavy at all. So I will go into the palace now and show you guys if I see anything else interesting. So what I've been seeing in the temples and doing myself is this ritual around the Buddhas and it involves a candle and incense and a special oil and also this gold leaf, um, almost like a sticker. And so you go and you bow in front of Buddha, it's happening right behind me, and you can say good intentions, you can pray for world peace, you can um, send prayers to loved ones, to your parents, to your family, whatever you like, and then you light from the sacred um, lights, you can light the candles and the incense, and then put them at the feet of Buddha, and then take the little gold plate and dip it in, um, or rather place it on part of Buddha's body. It's so beautiful and it just feels really, um, just feels really meditative and really peaceful and that you're contributing in some way to world peace as well. Next one, ingredient and the witchy is with you. Potato. Yep, potato. Already, already steamed them 10 minutes. 70% mm -hmm. they already cook. Okay, and used with the funky cutter. Yeah, funky, funky knife. Funky knife. Funky knife. And <laughs> barbecue. I taught you a new word today, fun. Funky. Funky. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are you going to use the new words? And buckley. And cauliflower. Next one for green green curry, green your green chili paste, one yeah. teaspoon, mm -hmm. coffee lamb leaf, lemongrass, and ginger and ginger system. And the veggies we use eggplant, eggplant, Thai eggplant, and yes, funky knife again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We have three sides, longer one, mini eggplants and baby eggplants. Today we use only mini one with funky knife. Let's see. So Pan, what, is, what are these the ingredients for? For green Thai curry. Green Thai curry. Yeah. And pumpkin again. <coughs> My favorite. Yeah. And funky knife. <coughs> A lot for color. The color is yeah. colorful. That's it. So I was walking along the street in Bangkok and I just came along this other random amazing weekend market selling all kinds of decorative and spiritual items, lots of different fruit. This is how I get the pineapple here. They put it in a bag and um, it's partly cut and then they break it up with a knife. I've also been getting tons of different mango and I just bought some mango steam and a fruit called rambutan. So the fruit here is really high in antioxidants it's so fresh there's so many different minerals it's coming you know this of course this is a tropical tropical country there's so many different um, places where the fruit grows outside Bangkok and in the islands on the coasts and everywhere so everything's feeling fresh I could not be feeling better even though it is incredibly hot I am staying hydrated and then staying refreshed with all the amazing vegan Thai food and all the fruit So I'm here at the river for sunset, which is my favorite place to be in Bangkok every day when the sun sets. After a long day of cooking every day, which is amazing but also a lot of work, my usual routine is to go for a walk and to check out some of the local markets and just watch you know, life happening all around in Bangkok. And then I come to this little park that I found near my hotel and I sit for a while and I read a book and kind of chill out. And then I watch the sunset over the river, which is usually stunning and beautiful. And even in this crazy city of Bangkok, which is so crowded and chaotic, coming from Seoul, it's nothing like Seoul. Seoul is also um, very crowded as well, but here there's just a lot more close contact and it's a lot more um, activity and things in the street. It's a little bit more dirty, um, which I actually don't. You know, I don't really mind the chaos because it's just so vibrant. There's a lot of life happening all around. But it is nice to find these really quiet places and moments um, in the city to sit and to enjoy the nature.